It's week number two in the National Football League as your Seattle Seahawks square off against the New England Patriots. The Seahawks coming off a win against the Denver Broncos at home to start the Mike McDonald era. Meanwhile, the Patriots began the Gerard Mayo era with the biggest upset in the league last week with a win against the Cincinnati Bengals. The Seahawks are three-and-a-half-point favorites. The over-under set at 35 and a half. Expected to be a low-scoring game. What's it going to take for the Seahawks to win? We'll go over my keys to victory, the injury report, as well as my prediction in just a bit. Tyler Jones here with you. Thanks for joining us. If you want the Seahawks to beat the Patriots, like the video, don't jinx it, do your part. I need at least 500 likes on today's video. We told you last week, if we got 500 likes, that would guarantee a Seahawks win. You guys delivered, and the Seahawks delivered. So why jinx it? Why mess with that mojo and energy? Just go ahead and do your part, like the video, and we'll get started with today's show. Let's begin with the injury report for Seattle. George Fant, doubtful with a knee injury at the time of this recording. Kenneth Walker with the abdomen is questionable, as is Pharaoh Brown with a foot injury. And then Yuchina and Wosu, we await his return, that MCL injury that he had. He is doubtful at this point in time. Meanwhile, the opposite side for the New England Patriots just won on the injury report. Offensive guard City Sow is questionable for Sunday's game with an ankle injury. Your keys to victory. What's it going to take for the Seahawks to beat the Patriots? Well, number one, run the damn ball. We saw the Seahawks do a really good job when it came to the run game last week against Denver, and I don't think that changes. Now, we'll see how much Kenneth Walker plays, but whether it's Walker or Charbonnet or Kenny McIntosh, the game plan doesn't change. you got to establish the run. You can't get away from the run game. And as much talk as there's been about Ryan Grubb bringing this spread offensive attack that traditionally throws the football a lot like he did at Washington, they have made it known. We've heard from Geno Smith and among others that they want to run the football. They want to establish the run to open up the passing game. And this week is the perfect opportunity going up against this New England team. Think about this. Last year, the Patriots were winless when allowing 120-plus rushing yards in a game last season. Newsflash, they did not give up 120 rushing yards last week against the Cincinnati Bengals. So according to that statistic from a season ago, you rush for 120 or more, you win. You beat New England. Then on the Seahawks side of things, taking this a step further, last year the Seahawks were 4-1 and one when averaging five or more yards per carry. So... Put the two and two together. If the Seahawks rush for 120, and if they average more than five yards a carry, they're going to win this football game. Simple as that. Run the football. Run the football effectively. Who do you got? Is it going to be the Seahawks, or is it going to be the Patriots? Type S for Seahawks. Type P for Patriots. Don't show me your P. Type all those S's in the comments section. I want to see as many S's as we can for your Seattle Seahawks. Get your predictions in now. We'll be live on Sunday afternoon for Seahawks and Patriots right here on Seahawks Today. Big Tex is going to be here with me. Our coverage begins with an hour-long pregame show at 9 a.m. Pacific, kickoff at 10 a.m. Pacific. Subscribe now. Join us. You will not want to miss it. YouTube.com slash Seahawks TV. It is going to be a great time here on the channel. Seahawks Patriots live. We'll see you then. Number two, let's talk about Devin Witherspoon. Letting Devin Witherspoon cook. Had a very good game against the Denver Broncos last week, but Mike McDonald mentioned that he kind of missed on a couple opportunities to get sacks on the quarterback. As good as he played last week, there's still room for improvement. And one theme of the offseason for the Seahawks when it comes to Devin Witherspoon is giving him freedom, giving him the freedom to do his thing. And for Devin Witherspoon, I think the freedom is going to be on full display, that they're going to let him cook this week against this New England Patriots team who has a bad receiving core, who has a bad offensive line. This is a chance for Devin Witherspoon to excel. McDonald on his radio show this week on Seattle Sports had this to say, timing is critical. You want to be on time. It's just a function of time and space. And then even if they do have him accounted for, he's slippery. He's got a way to work angles. He's got a couple of moves up the sleeve that he 
is just as good a feel for, like how to take a blocker in retaliation in relation to where the quarterback is. Devin Witherspoon last season, 79 tackles, three sacks, eight tackles for loss, and one forced fumble. And that was only in 14 games played. He's made it known he's got a goal to play in all 17 this year. And so you would expect those numbers to go up quite a bit, especially in this new Mike McDonald defense. Number three, you are facing the definition of a mid-quarterback in Jacoby Brissett. Jacoby Brissett is the stopgap quarterback for the New England Patriots. He's just keeping the seat warm until they're ready to turn things over to Drake May. I like Drake May a lot. I think he's going to be a very good quarterback for the New England Patriots. But with how bad they are, they're not close to contending. They're letting him sit behind Brissett, and Brissett kind of manage things until then. Even in the win last week in Cincinnati, Brissett didn't play that great. He was held to 120 yards passing, 62.5% completion percentage. The way the Patriots won last week was through their run game. Romadre Stevenson had 120 yards on the ground. They had 170 total yards. They ran the football and ran it well. Brissett didn't have to do much. If I'm the Patri- if I'm the Seahawks, I am shutting down the Patriots' run game. I'm not letting them beat the- me with the run. I'm forcing them to make Brissett beat me with his arm. That, to me, is the key. Think about this. Not only do the Patriots only have 120 yards passing, no receiver caught more than three passes last week for this New England Patriots team. So that receiving core is just bad. And if you're Seattle, you have to capitalize on that. I'll take my chances on Brissett beating me. Who will be the Seahawks MVP against the Patriots? We've talked about a couple names that come to mind already. What say you? Weigh in and let us know who you think that MVP will be for Seattle. Today's show is sponsored by Game Time. Game Time is the place to go for the best seats, the lowest prices guaranteed. Whether you're looking for tickets to sporting events, concerts, comedy shows, theater productions, and more, Game Time has got you covered. Maybe it's the Seahawks game, a Mariners game, Seattle Storm game. They got it all, folks. And you choose your game you want to go to. They got the prices listed. You choose your seat. See if you like that seat or not with their seat views feature. And then you're checking out with Apple Pay, Google Pay, Venmo, all major credit card providers. Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets to see your favorite teams play live even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. Your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code CHATSPORTS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms supply. Again, create an account, redeem code CHATSPORTS for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. The link is in the comments and the description of today's video. DK. Touchdowns all day. He rules. DK Metcalf. Not his best performance last week against the Denver Broncos as Patrick Sertan slowed him down quite a bit. But this week, taking on this New England Patriots team who has a pretty decent corner in second-year player Christian Gonzalez, he's got to have a big day. I think this is one of those days where we see DK stuff the stat sheet a bit that when we look back on the season – and we see his overall numbers, we look back and we say, oh yeah, remember that Patriots game? This is his chance. And in particular, really to open it up, throw the vertical passing game, and get those big plays that DK is known for. DK talked about recently Ryan Grubb's offense and how he fits in when it comes to that vertical passing game, stretching it downfield. He said recently, Grubb is known for his explosive plays downfield, so just looking forward to him opening up the playbook just so we can exploit defenses and push the ball down the field. That's where DK comes in. This is a great chance for him to do so against this New England Patriots team. Last but certainly not least on our keys to victory for the Seattle Seahawks, winning the turnover battle. Take care of the football, plain and simple. You take care of the football, you win. Let's go chat stats for you on this. The Patriots last week, The thing that they did really well, besides running the football, obviously, against that Cincinnati Bengals team, they didn't turn the football over. Not one time. They took care of the football. And on top of that, they forced two turnovers in their win against Cincinnati last week. Meanwhile, for the Seahawks, on their side of things last week, they turned the ball over twice. 
You may recall that interception from Geno Smith on the second play from scrimmage. But they forced three turnovers in their win against the Denver Broncos. So not only do you need to protect the football, but getting that extra possession or two or three for your offense, that's a golden opportunity, and you got to take advantage of it. What's your confidence level heading into Sunday's game against the New England Patriots? I am sky high on this. I feel really good. I'll give you my prediction here in a moment, but my confidence level – I'm about a 9 out of 10 when it comes to beating New England here. I feel very good. What's your confidence level? Let me know. To recap, our keys to victory, to beating the New England Patriots, run the damn ball. Doesn't matter if it's Walker, if it's Charbonnet, if it's McIntosh, got to run the football. Let Devin Witherspoon cook. Let him do his thing. Let him get after the quarterback. Make Jacoby Brissett beat you. Jacoby Brissett, I don't think, is that great of a quarterback. Got to load the box, stop the run and see what he can do with those awful receivers there in New England. DK all day, he rules. DK, go out there and stretch the field, get those big plays, take advantage of the mismatches in that weak secondary of New England, and win the turnover battle. If the Seahawks do all those things, I think they'll be in great shape for Sunday. My pick, I like Seattle to get a double-digit win. I think that the Seahawks dominate this one 24-13, to the final score. The Seahawks advance to 2-0 before a very tough test when they return home to take on the Miami Dolphins. If you enjoyed today's show, you know what to do. Like the video. Like it for a Seahawks win. Do your part. We certainly would appreciate it. I'm Tyler Jones. We'll see you next time. Go Hawks.